fictional violence, but what about violence in real life? The film you're about to see shows an incredibly violent fight, which for some at least is entertaining. <laughs> Make of that. Talk to you. Yeah. Do you want to talk to you? No, you don't want to talk about it. That was unlicensed boxing. It's unregulated. Uh, it's not officially recognised, but it has a huge following. Now, on my left here is Lenny McLean. He was the man who was doing most of the fighting in that match. Uh, a film is being made about his life called The Governor, all about his street fights. And uh, on. I just want to say, Craig made the film a top actor. I hope it goes well. Okay, and beside him is, is Joe Pyle. Now, Joe is a, a manager for this kind of unlicensed boxing. He also organises unlicensed boxing bouts. Now, Joe, could you just explain a bit about the... the whole well, first of all, we're not unlicensed. We're unaffiliated to the Board of Control. Okay, you're unaffiliated. Yeah. And we put a show on. We have referees, we have timekeepers, we have doctor, doctors past them. Everything, everything is above board. Mm -hmm. So it's not unlicensed. And uh, Lenny is the heavyweight champion of the NBC. Mm -hmm. This is your organisation. If there's a fist fight, which is uh, a bare knuckle fight, Lenny would fight anybody, come whoever it is. He'd fight them outside right. the studio right now if they want it, you know? Mm. That's the way it goes. And otherwise it's done in the ring, is it? Otherwise it's done in the ring with gloves and doctors, everybody passing it legal. We're not unlicensed, we're unaffiliated. So you're saying it's exactly the same, really, as affiliated boxing? We're unaffiliated, mm. yes, and Roy Shaw was a champion before. But it's otherwise the same as sort of normal boxing, as let's say licensed boxing. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's licensed boxing, same thing. Okay. Well, Lenny, I have to say, looking at that, it didn't look like it was regulated, it was completely out of hand. Surely it's much too violent. No, that ain't violence. That is not two big powerful men having a fight for a few quid is not violent. What is? What I call violence, eating little kids and mugging old women, that's violent. Not a big, powerful man right. who's fighting another big, powerful man. We knew the rules. All in fighting. The winner gets 10 grand, the other geezer gets the elbow. Right? I phoned him at the hospital the next day. He said, Len, the best man won. I said, what happened? He said, I can't have broken with the broken jaw. But the thing is, yeah. two big, powerful men agreed to a fight. If people should mind their own business and stay out of people's affairs, it'd be an happier world. But too many people say, this shouldn't go in and that shouldn't go on. Let people do what they want to do. They can switch the telly off if they don't want to watch it. We're grown men. We've all got brains. Don't use us like idiots. So you're two consenting adults. Yeah, let's have a saying. tear up and a smash up. We nick a few quid. What's it going to do with Mr. Brown, Mr. Green, or him? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay, so that, your, your, idea of violence, your idea of violence then... Is eating is children yeah. and mugging old women. That is violent. Mm -hmm. Not a big powerful guy who's having a fight with fight. another powerful guy. Because... What can happen? We think a few quid or we might lose. Okay, well, the fact is, though, and uh, this is to introduce Ken Jones, the fact is that the British Board of Boxing Control doesn't recognise this, and it's also supposedly illegal. Now, Ken Jones, you obviously agree with that. Why do you not like it's not illegal. unofficial? That's not violence. I mean, that's farce. It's not sport, therefore it's farce. What do you mean farce? It's farce because... All you need there is a doctor. You don't need a referee. You don't need seconds. What about you Ali? Well, just, you just, a minute, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Eight, eight rules of boxing were broken there in the space of about 25 seconds. But people now, if the, sport, if the sport has got any future, and I'm not sh sure that even licensed boxing's got a future in an, yeah. in an allegedly civilized society, it's got to conform to rules, it's got to conform to regulations. Otherwise, it's not a sport, it's a spectacle. What do you call licensed boxing? Licensed boxing is boxing that conforms to a laid-down pattern of rules. Yeah. And 
That's license boxing. I mean, you could, you, license boxing is you fought to rules. You don't need a license in America to fight. You do have to have a license. You license. do have to have a license in America. You belong to the rules. I'm sorry. You have a license to fight. You have to have a license in America. Yes, we have rules and regulations. In America, you've got about... What rules? What rules are there? Tell me what the rules are. How many times have the rules broken under Border Control rules? What rule, rock the rules apply there? The rules there was win or lose, and I wasn't going to come That's not second. a rule. That's so an attitude. So what people want to see? Well, listen, if I was having a bare knuckle they fight tomorrow see. night you couldn't. at Wembley, you couldn't. You'd be I would pack it. You you'd know be why? Arrested. Because deep right. down, you know you'd be arrested. deep down, everybody deep down goes back to the cavemen days. They love violence. Well, this is the point. Prize fighting with bare fists is illegal. You'd be arrested. But, but surely, if I was selling wait, tickets tomorrow, how many would I sell? I'm not honoured by that. You know. I'm honoured by the ethics of it. Hold on a second. The ethics. Surely, the the men, ethics. surely it boils down to the same thing. You're a self-governing body. Two men coming I'm to a ring, part of agreeing to fight. Well, the surely British that's, boxing ball but that's what boxing is all about. Two men agreeing to fight. Yeah. Surely there's no difference. You can't differentiate except for the fact yes, that you're you, saying you're yes, more you regulated. Can, because it's both violence. Because if it's a sport, it has to conform to certain laid down rules and regulations. If it's not a sport, it doesn't exist. Would you rather see one shot? You might as well say you can send. You might as well say send two football teams out there. Don't bother the ball, about the ball. Just kill each other to death. Oh, you saw Would one you fight. The other fights that they're not all the same. Oh no, there was one fight. The other, all the others stick to the rules. Jab and move. Well, let's have a look. I'll just stick to the rules. I'll just win because <laughs> I want to win. It was one okay, anyway. well, I want to bring in another element here because when that was first broadcast by ITN, hundreds of people rang in to complain. Now, Michael Winner makes, is over here, he's a top director. He makes a lot of very violent films. Do you think that's the kind of thing that you might have included in one of your films? Well, of course, the very big difference is in my films, it's play acting. Yes. And whilst we have shown uh, in a story uh, types of violence as great as that, it, there's a very big difference, part of a story. But mm -hmm. I absolutely do not believe that the nation, We're seeing this tiny clip, of Lenny yes, having a go was was danger. Morality was in danger. We're talking about would you show more of it? Well, how much more? You mean ten seconds more? No, the nation would have been. Well, beginning to talk about his views on violence, Mr. Winner, you were saying there was a hell of a difference as far as you were concerned between violence in films and fictional violence and violence in real life. Could you just continue on what you were saying? Well, films have always taken stories from real life, and stories from real life include many times violence, or the hero beating up the villain and the uh, audience clapping, and nothing wrong with that. And everybody knows it's play acting, and I might have, there have been some very fine films about bare knuckle fighting. Mm. I was brought up on an Errol Flynn film, Gentleman Jim. My dear friend Charles Bronson did a film called Street Fighter. Very good film about bare knuckle fighting, and I hope they make Lenny's film. You see, if they can get an actor with that personality, it'll be a miracle, but good luck to them. Do you see a difference then between that kind of fictional violence and a real life violence, say, watching a, a boxing match like that on TV? Well, I must say, uh, at, at risk of being pulverized by Lenny, that I wouldn't like to see 10 rounds of, of bare knuckle you fighting on television. To. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that all of us would have certain things we'd wish to see censored to a point. I'm not sure if Lenny does it privately uh, and people enjoy it, it does any harm to anybody. And indeed, it may well be that Lenny and those who fight in that way are getting out their angst and their anger on each other, which might well be better than if they didn't do it, knocking the public about. Beautiful. Well, he looks yeah, well, 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 hold on a second. Beautiful. Do you see any difference then between unlicensed boxing and legitimate, say, let's say legitimate boxing on television in, in terms of being broadcast? Well, I've only seen a very few seconds of yes. unlicensed boxing uh, and uh, I don't really think it's for an hour of television, mm. but, uh, but do you know, see there are a lot of people possibly? very seriously injured in ordinary boxing, as it is. Okay. I wonder how many casualties they have in unlicensed boxing, unaffiliated. whether they're any worse unaffiliated, I think. It's an interesting boxing. point, this, that you're, you're, in terms of television, you're, you're, you're differentiating between the two. Surely violence on TV TV is violence on TV, whether it's in films, whether it's in the boxing ring, whether it's wherever. I mean, making that well, kind of Well, it depends on the individual seconds and minutia of the violence. Mm. You can't, there's no such thing as violence. If I slap him, you could say that was violent, he's a lovely fella. Mm. Uh, you know, you have to go into the detail. There are things I don't think you should see on television, although I think we are far more censored than we should be. We have the most censored television in the free world. We have the most censored cinema in the free world. Mm. But nevertheless, we would all draw the line somewhere. If there was a film or television of the rape and slaughter of eight-year-old children, nobody would want it on except a lunatic. Okay. See, there's enough, there's enough opposition to boxing as it is. 
And sometimes I, I feel a degree of ambivalence about Bob. Licensed boxing, if you want to call it that. Uh, when you see a, a kid like Johnny Owen uh, being die, killed, yes. he dies in the ring, he goes into a coma, he doesn't come out of a coma. It makes you feel that maybe there's no place for boxing in society. If there is a place for boxing in society, it's got to be properly controlled and even better supervised than it is now okay. with stringent medical rules. Okay, on that point, I want to bring in Tony Vanderberg. Now, Tony is an ex-boxer, he's an ex-boxing commentator, and he's an ex-inspector for the British Board of Boxing Control. Tony, you've been listening to these arguments about differences between various forms of violence on TV. What do you basically think of your Well, I think, of course, both are violence, and both can cause damage. However, I agree exactly what has been said. If you're going to have boxing, and don't forget that some countries are ahead of us, and I do use the word ahead, and have banned boxing because they consider it is violent, and more than anything, young men get their brains scrambled to entertain us, and I think that's something we should remember. But the unlicensed boxing is a joke, basically. Come and if you're going to have that. real boxing... Well, I mean, look, Why look at the To be a first-class professional boxer, you've got to be fit and trained to a minute. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't see this... If you'd have seen Roy Shaw here tonight as well... Oh, yes, I think it's wonderful. I think you and Dan would be wonderful. I train five days a week. I train three hours a day. Yeah. I'm 20 stone of muscle. I train every day. And I don't. Smoking. Eh? And smoking. Can I ask uh, you something? I, I haven't seen something? the big champion smoking while they're. Can I, I ask you something? Well, well, let, me tell you something. Drink, let me tell you please. something. Let me tell you something. Yeah. I can smoke, I still train, and I'm the best cobble fighter in London. Let me tell you something else. What you know what? It's all in the nut. It's all in the nut. In the nut. In the nut. No me. No me. I I I train. Lenny, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to interrupt you there. May I answer that gentleman for a moment? A moment longer. I'm running away. I wish I had. I'm sorry about that. Now I. It's a pity we don't have any more.